Blender 3.5 is finally here, and with it comes a lot of updates. Big updates include hair nodes. With hair nodes, you are able to procedurally create hair and realistic fur very quickly, very easily. You can see on the website here the generation of hair curves and the interpolation of hair curves as well. You can get some great info on the Blender site. I will leave the link down in the description below. But of course, there's much more than just hair nodes that got added. So we're going to take a look at some demo files that were provided and see what the update to 3.5 actually brings to the table. So right here, you can see we've just opened up the hair nodes demo file and it comes with a little handy dandy instructions notes. So you can see here, we're currently looking at the cyberpunk hair and it states that the, it is intended to showcase the workflow of creating a hair setup with the modifier tab. If we take a look at the bottom right hand side, you can see the modifiers with the hair clump curves, the interpolation of the hair, and the trim hair curves. So just by changing a few of those parameters in the modifier tab, you can see it does have a large effect on the overall end look of hair. By far the best addition of this though is with the geometry nodes tab. And you can see here, this demo file also comes along with instructions on how to completely modify and change the look of the overall hair. So by changing the factor of the hair curve noise, you can see it changes the flyaway hairs. And this is for the long hair type. So this hairstyle, as it states here, uses two separate hair objects in order to separate the grooming in different parts. And that can all be changed within the geometry nodes tab here. You can get some real wild and wacky looking hair with changing those nodes. Now onto the curly hair. Now again, this is with the geometry nodes. The really cool thing about the way this one's set up is you can change every single part of the curl, including the thick and thinness of the hair. As you can see there, if you make it too thin, uh, the character can look a bit bald. Now with the roll hair curves modifier, you can see if we change the factor, it changes the overall roll of the curl. So you can get real tight rolls, and by increasing that factor, it gets a bit looser, a bit more wild. And of course you've got the roll length and the roll radius and the roll depth and the roll taper and there's so much to be changed. There's so much that you can change and make edits to that makes such a massive difference to the overall look of the hair. Again this is a great addition into Blender as it just makes hair so much cooler to make procedurally. But with this update they didn't just add in hair nodes to 3.5, there's a lot more that they added so let's take a look at the, uh, the other new things that they've added into 3.5. So as you can see here, this is the VDM brushes demo file, and this is another new thing that they've added into Blender 3.5. As you can see here, this is the uh, vector displacement mapping. A really cool thing about this, you can see at the moment we've got an ear selected on the brush, and if we want to add an ear to this sculpture, we simply click and drag, and this just gets instantly blended within that mesh. So if we take a closer look here, you can see the blending into the the mesh there and it does a really good job of it. Uh, let's take a look at the eye here and if we take a look at the brush set itself we can see we've got human ears, uh, eyes, more eyes, some horns, some mouths and noses, all different types of uh, preset sculpts that you can just add on the fly. Now we do have a mirror modifier here so if we want to add something uh, singularly we'll have to turn that off. But you can see you can make <laughs> it blends so so nicely. Obviously you can always go in here and tweak it maybe smooth it out a little bit. If we just go to a sculpt tool and try something like a thumb and just you can nudge this around you can you know maybe fill get this a bit smoother. But you can see even without having to go through and touch it up, it still looks very nice. It blends really, really nicely together. Okay, let's take a look at the horns here. So you can see you can just quickly add and rotate any kind of preset brushes and you can make your own preset brushes. And you can see just how, how much quicker this will make modeling especially like character and creature design. Okay, this is supposed to be scales here, so let's just take a look at that. Okay, so this is a preset one where it's its own size and you can't change the size. But you can see you can change the orientation of where it will actually get placed. So let's just 
place a few of these if we can get this looking interesting. You can see just how quickly you can you can make something like this. But yeah, definitely with these preset brushes, you can make something a thing of nightmares. <laughs> but this is really cool and really powerful. You can see here in the Then the instructions here even tells you how to enable the VDM brushes. So to enable the vector displacement for a draw brush, load an open EXR file suited for vector displacement, open uh, set brush texture mapping to area plane and enable the vector displacement toggle. So like I said, you can do this with your own. So you can create your own kind of um, presets for sculpting. And I'm sure this will get incorporated into uh, a lot of people's workflows and this is going to make uh, creature sculpting so much quicker than it did previously. I mean just look how quickly you can just add in these to give him scales. Now if we take a look at the brush settings here we do have radius and radius units as long as the strength, the direction, all the settings here. And again taking a look at these instructions they do tell you that VDM brushes work best on smooth surfaces. Uh, try to avoid any overlaps with previous strokes and as um, you know we've, we've taken a look here it does seem to get a bit funky when too much is added on all at once. Like those horns are definitely messed up and you can see once they do start over overlapping it does get a little bit funky but for the most part really really powerful okay well that was the uh, vector displacement mapping brushes uh, if you'd like to check out these demo files for yourself the links will be in the description below taking another look into the hair nodes that just got added uh, there is the demo file for animals fur you can see here at the moment we've got the highland cattle selected and we just remove that it's going to take a look at the uh, rendered preview And this just looks absolutely crazy. Now there's different examples that come within this demo file. There is uh, the Highland cattle, the zebra, uh, beaver and sheep. And they all have different hair properties and profiles. So the sheep would be curly and, and short. Uh, the beaver would be long and scraggly. Uh, the zebra, short, kind of straight hair. And the Highland cattle, uh, long, and, long and straggly again. The really cool thing about this is just how it shows you how to uh, work with all of these these nodes. So you can see here how to adjust the base shape, the curl of the hair, trim at random points throughout the hair. Yeah, the great thing about these demo files is it really does highlight all the different sections of how to get it to look like it does. It's a great tool to learn as well. And again, if you'd like to check out the demo files, they'll be in the link in the description below. And of course, they did add a hell of a lot more to 3.5 than just what I've shown you today. But going over all of that will make this video so much more longer. So I encourage you to take a look at 3.5 yourself. Go ahead and download it and take a look through, take a look at the website for the change notes as well. Because they've added a lot of stuff 
to this update. Yeah, that's been it for this video, so check out 3.5 and I'll see you in the next one.